Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. My name is Edwin Hernandez, Grasshopper Specialist at Chip Diver. In today's video, following up our first part of our optimization tutorials, we will explain some tips and tricks to optimize your grasshopper definitions in order to reduce their computation time. If you missed our last tutorial, you will find the link down in the description. This time, we will look at the difference between B-wraps and meshes and we will create optimized meshes. This is particularly useful if you are creating product configurators, like a lot of our clients do, and you don't want your users to be waiting for a long time in order to get a response from the viewer. Before we get started, remember to subscribe and to like this video as it really helps our channel. And if you want to know more about what you can do with ShipDiver, make sure to check our website. All the relevant links and files will be down in the description. Let's get started. So in today's tutorial, we will use this parametric range as our base example to explain all the concepts. This was created by one of our users. And in this blog, he explained how he created this parametric bench. Here at the end of the blog post, we can find the ship diver model with all the relevant parameters. So first of all, we need to create the profile of our bench. So in this tutorial, it's explained how this profile is created. So in Grasshopper, we did something similar. So here we have our rectangle with our base width and height. Everything is laid down on the X, Y plane. Then we create some random points in this rectangle. We create a polyline from those random points. We reduce our polyline so we don't have any points that are not relevant, that don't create any special change in our polyline and then we created a fillet. And with that, we have our base profile cube. Then we have other parameters like the offset size, the rip thickness and rip spacing, which is parameters we will look at later. So let's start with the solid bench. So that's the first option that we have here in the ship diver model, the solid bench. So, so for creating the solid bench, we have three options. For the first one, let's have a look at the cluster. So we have a base rail that we are going to use to sweep our profile, our base profile. And for that, we just create a perpendicular frame at the beginning of our rail. We position our base profile in that plane. And then we just use the normal sweep component. So the sweep component just requires the rail, our planner cube, and then our section. And with that, we get our final sweep. So then we just need to tap our B-wrap, so to make a solid B-wrap. We just created this uh, boundary surface and we position our boundary surface at the beginning and at the end of our curved planes. Then we get our sweep B wrap, then our boundary surfaces, we just join them, and that's how we create our solid B wrap. Then we output our B wrap in one side and on the other side we are meshing our B wrap. So we're using this mesh B wrap component and some speed settings. If we were to send this B-Wrap to ShapeDiver, so if we put this B-Wrap into our ShapeDiver display geometry component, this B-Wrap will be automatically converted into a mesh in order to be displayed by the viewer in your online application. This is something that happens automatically also here in Rhino. So if we were to bake our B-Wrap, and then we type what, even though this is a B-Wrap, this B-Wrap is generating a render mesh, which has in this case more than 6,000 polygons. So even though we are creating a B-Wrap, our graphic card is always looking for meshes. So the problem here is that, of course, because we are not creating the mesh ourselves, then the system creates the mesh, and of course this mesh can end up not in a very optimized mesh. So if you check here with the mesh B-Wrap component that we used, the mesh has just 2,000 vertices, whereas the automatically created mesh has more than 6,000 vertices. So we have reduced significantly the amount of vertices in our mesh, which makes the processing of it way faster. So that's why even though we support B-Wraps in ShapeDiver, so you can send B-Wraps to ShapeDiver, it is recommended that you actually send meshes so that you control the quality and the size of those meshes. Now let's have a look at the second option, the second cluster. 
So this cluster, instead of using the sweep component, is using the loft component. So it takes a little bit less to compute because we are giving more information to the script. So in the sweep component, we are just giving one single profile and then the rail. In this case, we are giving a profile that is positioned in several parts along our rail that then we can loft through. Then on the other side, we create the boundary surface and we do the same that we did in the first option, that is to position this boundary surface at the beginning and at the end of our rail. Then we just join our B-Rub and we just mesh it. Then let's compare the size of these meshes. The first option give us 2000 vertices. The second option give us 1000 vertices. So we have reduced almost in half the amount of vertices. Either way, we are still using freeform components. So we have here the loft and we have here the strip. These are freeform components that use B-Wraps in order to create our meshes. But what if we could actually avoid using freeforms and actually go directly from a curve to a mesh? So that's our third option. So our third option is using the same profile, is using the same rail, but first of all, we convert this profile and this rail into polylines. Why? Because in order to create meshes, we need clearly defined points in our space, and that's what a polyline is. And for the rail, we also want to create the polyline so that we can extract the discontinuities, so the points in which our polyline changes of direction, so that we know the relevant positions in which our planes should be positioned. If we check now our cluster, first of all, we will create the planes, the frames, based on the rail polyline. So we have here our original rail. Then we have the parameters that come from our rail polyline. From that, we can evaluate our curve in those points. And from this, we can have the tangent and we can create the cross product with the normal of our rail. And with that, we can create our planes. Now that we have our planes, we just need to take our profile, our base profile, and reorient it to our frame. In this way, we start to create the wireframe of our mesh. Finally, we will use a C-sharp component that you will be able to get down in the description. And this component takes a list of polylines as an input and outputs a mesh. These polylines have to have the same amount of points because it will create the faces in our mesh by connecting each point in our polylines. So if we have a different amount of points or the order is different as well of our points in our polylines, then this will not work with our script. If we check the result, then we get a way more optimized mesh from our script. Now, in order to cap, to close our mesh, we can use this component from Pufferfish, which is called the polyline to mesh component, which works similarly to our boundary surface component. But this one, instead of output a surface, it outputs a mesh. This other option here that uses the same c -sharp component, the Love Mesh component, is useful later in this tutorial. Now we just orient these mesh caps to the beginning and to the end of our rail queue. And we just need to join our mesh and that's all. In that way, we never went through a surface and we created an optimized mesh. If we now compare the mesh size of the different options of our solid bench, we can see that we went from 2000 vertices down to almost 700 vertices. If we compare the mesh wireframe of our different options, we can see how this differentiates from each other. So here we can see a lot of faces created with our sweep. Then we go to our loft. That reduces a bit more the amount of faces that are created, but this creates some unnecessary points here in the middle, for example. And the last option, the C-sharp option, creates a very elegant and very clean mesh with just the most crucial information. Another advantage that we have with our last option is that we can control also the quality of our mesh. So if we want it to be very high resolution or low resolution. So if we increase the tolerance, that will give us a lower resolution mesh. And then if we decrease the tolerance, then that will give us more and more faces in our mesh. We normally want something in the middle, so we don't want to go very high resolution because that means a lot of data that needs to be transferred to our online configurator. 
but we don't want also a low resolution one because that will affect how accurate our model is to the original geometry. So in this case, to the original rail. In terms of computation time, we can also see a big difference. So we go from 81 milliseconds with the sweep to 27 milliseconds with the loft, and finally to just six milliseconds with our C-sharp component. Now let's go to the next option that our parametric bench has. This is the solid hollow option. If we check here in Shape Diver, here we have the solid option, then we can add a hole in the middle of our bench. So to do that, we will use these same clusters, but with a bit of difference. So we have here our group, a hollow bench. So we have original profile, then we just offset our original profile based on the offset size. We merge these curves into one single list and we input these lists in our same cluster. So we have here the sweep cluster. So we have the same concept. We just graphed here so that we make sure that each of our curves, so the two that we have here, get actually swept. And here we also make sure with the boundary surface that we get the hollow in the middle of our surface. And then we just join our b wrap and then we mesh it. This, of course, requires more computation time because we are now sweeping through two curves, not just one. And the mesh, of course, is bigger as well. Now, the loft option is similar. So we also graphed here our profiles so that we make sure that each of our profiles get positioned. And we loft through these two profiles. We create the same boundary and we create the same positioning of our caps. And finally, we get our final mesh. In this case, we go from almost 4,000 vertices to 2,000 vertices. And finally, we have here our third option, the same cluster with the C-sharp loft mesh script. But the difference here is that after we convert our best profile into polyline, instead of using our traditional offset curve component that comes with Grasshopper, we use this one called the polyline offset component. This component was created by our CTO and it has extended parameters that we can use to create our meshes. So in this case, the most relevant for us is the keep duplicates parameter. This means that if two points in our polyline collapse into one, instead of deleting one of them, it will keep both in the same space. This is relevant for what I explained regarding our C-sharp, our loft mesh C-sharp, which it requires always the same amount of points. So if we were to offset our curve, but we don't keep the duplicates of our points, then this will create a different amount of points in our cures, and then this will be a problem for our loft mesh seizure. Then when we go inside our cluster, the main difference is here in our caps option, where instead of using our polyline to mesh component from Pufferfish, we are using also the C sharp script loft mesh, in which we are giving two polylines. One is the one that has the collapsed points, and this creates our loft between these two curves. So as you can see here in this corner, these three points end up in the same point in the interior curve. And that's how our loft mesh component keeps the same order when creating each of these quads in our mesh. Then on the sides, we also graft our two curves so that we make sure that all of them get positioned in the relevant planes. And then we use the loft component that will give us two meshes, the one that is in the interior and the one that is in the exterior. Then we merge our caps with our sides. And that's how we get also a closed mesh, which never went through a free form component. In this case, we went from almost 4,000 vertices to 1,300 vertices. And in terms of computation time, we went from 155 milliseconds to just 21 milliseconds. Now let's go to the next option in our parametric bench. This option is the ribs option, which creates instead of a solid, creates these ribs along our bench rail. To create this option with traditional components, we will just take our base profile, we will do the same offset, we'll create a boundary surface, then we just extrude it based on the rib thickness, and then we just position this base rib in the relevant planes based on the reefs spacing parameter. And finally, we mesh our b reps Now, as you can see here, this meshing is taking 641 milliseconds to compute. So a very simple optimization step that we can take here is to do this meshing before the orientation instead of after. So that this meshing has to happen just 
once after our extrude and then what we reorient is not the b-wrap but the mesh so we take our extrude then we mesh it that gives us just nine milliseconds of computation and then we actually orient this mesh in our relevant positions that's why you have to be very strategic in the ordering of your components anyways if we check the mesh that gets created from our extrude we can see that there is a lot of irrelevant information in our mesh so we can see a lot of points that are irrelevant here in our mesh and those points we can get rid of them through using a custom settings component this component will give you more parameters that you can play with in order to create a more optimized mesh but the other option would be to actually avoid using the extrude component so that's the second option that we have here so we are using the same polygon offset component that we used before so that we get our interior and our exterior curve but instead of using in our cluster the bench rail we are actually creating a line as the rail that has the length of our reef thickness and gets sampled at zero and at one so that means at the beginning and at the end of our line and in that way we can use this cluster the same cluster that we have using the solid bench and the hollow bench options to create extruded version of our ribs but directly as a mesh and then we just reorient this base mesh rib in the different planes that are sampled from our rail in this last ribs option we go from a base rib mesh of almost 400 vertices to a base rib mesh of 150 vertices the computation time also gets reduced so we can see here that for example the extrude component takes 6 milliseconds the mesh wrap component takes 18 milliseconds and then the orient component another 3 milliseconds whereas here our mesh component takes just 4 milliseconds and our orient component takes just 2 milliseconds and with this we finish the explanation of the creation of optimized meshes so how you can avoid first of all freeform components or in general b-wrap components and go directly to optimized meshes we have also other c-sharp scripts that we have developed that you can also use to go directly from polylines to meshes again all of that will be down in the description so in this case we have this one called the polyline to rotational mesh c-sharp this one takes a base profile then we have a rotational plane and then we have the number of segments that will be rotated along this rotational plane and if we check the result it gives us a very clean optimized mesh and on the other hand we have here the boundary mesh component this one is a bit different to the boundary mesh of pufferfish because it takes a base polyline but it meshes through a center point so we have for example here the original center point and if we check how this mesh is created we can see that it goes from the points in our boundary to this center point so if, if we start to move this center point our mesh changes based on that remember that grasshopper also have some native components that allow the creation of meshes so if we go into the meshes tab we have here some primitives that we can create directly as mesh so we can create a box as mesh we can create a pipe we can create a mesh plane a sphere a loft a sweep all of these go directly into a mesh without going through surfaces we also support some plugins that also help in the manipulation and creation of meshes that are for example pufferfish that has some extensions for the mesh creation and manipulation and weaverbird that also has some components you can check other third-party plugins that we support in our support page. And that's all for today's tutorial. We have learned the difference between B-Wraps and meshes and why meshes are important when it comes to rendering. We have also learned how to create optimized meshes. So we are always trying to find the most direct way to create meshes. I hope you learned something new today. And if you like this video, please click the button down below in the next tutorial, we will learn how to send data from our Grasshopper definition to our online applications in the most efficient way. So if you don't want to miss the next tutorial, please subscribe and I will see you in the next tutorial.